Hi, Moose. We're going to go check on our worm stuff today. While he's here. We're going to check on our worms. Not technically the worms. We're going to help for some worm food. So today we're talking about pre-composting. I've been doing some research trying to figure out what some solutions are. I haven't really come up with a great answer. But the problem is, is even despite the fact that I have four tiers of worms in various stages in my hot frog composter under here, I cannot keep up with the amount of food scraps that myself, my husband are generating. So just the two of us. Now part of it is because I started with essentially 500 worms over the last year or so that have duplicated, I'm hoping to some extent, but not enough to keep up. So these old salad containers are about eh, a week or two's worth of scraps that we've generated and not even all of them, just the ones I felt like keeping. And so I've been trying to do some research and figure out how we can pre-compost the food quicker so that it breaks down in another location and then it goes to the worms. And there's the Bukashi or whatever it's called, um, if I'm familiar with in the sense that I read about it, but there was a few problems I came up, um, that came up repeatedly, which was variations on you have to buy the special yeast, whatever bacteria to do it. And so I was like, lots an extra cost. I'm not really into doing um, long term. And then two, uh, it smells terrible. And to some extent, your worms might not benefit from it. Um, they, don't, they don't like it for various reasons. Some people said their worms are fine with it, but more than a few people were like, mm, maybe not the best thing to transition your worms to. So my solution is I've got two buckets to start with. These are supposedly food grade buckets that I got from Lowe's. And I did get the technically non-food grade safe lids because they were easier. They're like the easy on and off. And I was like, well, no food's really touching this. So I'm not super worried about it. So we got these from Lowe's for like $4 and change each. I got two to start with, but I'm technically just starting one bucket today. And drilled some holes using a quarter inch drill bit. And just obviously no rhyme or reason. Drilled holes here and then drilled holes on the just the top portion of it. And then because I'm in Florida and it's absurdly hot and we have bugs year round, what I thought I would do is prevent the bugs from coming in, but still allowing airflow. So all the holes that I drilled, I applied this screen tape to, and I'll link to it down in the description, but I got it off of Amazon. I could not find it in my big box store, like Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, but it's essentially, it's a tape, um, so there's a adhesive on one side, and you just peel off the plastic and cut as needed, and it's very helpful. So I'm hoping that this, and so what I've been doing is essentially cutting little squares like this, and then you just peel the plastic off and stick it on, and it's really easy. Um, so we'll see how it holds up uh, long term in the Florida heat. So this bucket... Um, has some airflow already now that we have the holes in it. So my plan is fill it and then let it sit. I am probably going to do a little bit of an experiment where I let the bucket, like bucket A, go somewhere and bucket B go somewhere else. So like maybe we'll put one bucket in the garage and then one bucket maybe on the back porch. I'm trying to figure out where's the best place for them to go. But Right now, the long-term plan is to let them sit filled with food for a couple weeks, break down and start decomposing, hopefully be bug-free, and then that way, in a couple weeks, a month, month and a half, whatever we're looking at, the food scraps will have broken down enough so that way by the time I feed them to the worms, they'll be more optimal for the worms and the worms can go through them quicker, I'm hoping. Um, I'll let you guys, I'll, I'll keep you posted on how this bucket is going for now. Um, I'm also considering, let's say we fill this bucket, we let it sit for a couple weeks, notice that there are some bugs or something in there. I've considered 
putting those scraps into the freezer to kill any bugs that might have laid eggs or something in here. But I can't can't solve the problem until there's problems solved. So I'm gonna leave them in this container for now and see how they do. The first set of food scraps is gonna be some combination of this here. And then I have some random paper towels, which I realize isn't a food scrap per se, but I was thinking I need something at the bottom to help kind of absorb moisture since I did not put drainage holes in the bottom. And I did wash this out with soap and water just to make sure all the processing chemicals are out of it. So my thought is, oh yeah, also just a quick tip it, use old scissors when cutting up that tape. It, it leaves a very, very sticky residue. But for now, I'm gonna just throw a little bit of paper towels in the bottom just to act as a absorber of any moisture because obviously there's no worms in here. I don't intend to put worms in here, but I guess you never know. But this will help keep hopefully any moisture from building up too much. And we can always add more later. I also have this pizza liner from like a frozen pizza crust. I got a cauliflower pizza crust that I'm gonna put in here as the top. It's a really good size. So I'm hoping that'll help like push everything down a little bit, but I'll show you guys what I'm putting in there. So we'll start with the smaller salad containers. So let's see. And some of this stuff is things that uh, worms aren't necessarily thrilled about, but I have a reason, I, I think it'll be okay. So we have some radishes, some bananas, some cauliflower ends, some cabbage, uh, some lime, uh, a lot of bananas, some bell pepper, bits and pieces. So that's container one. I'll show you guys how full that is, just so you can get a sense of how much we're putting in here. So definitely still more room to go. As I'm filling this, I also want to share, oh yeah, so some of this stuff has been sitting a little bit longer like this, so it's already starting to mold which is great. It smells terrible because it's molding, but that's good. It'll help speed up the composition process. All right, I'll show you guys where we're at. So I'm gonna keep filling pretty much as much as I can fill. Now this one has more lime, some onion edges, this one's been sitting a little bit longer, so it definitely is a little bit more potent. You can see from the container, it's been breaking down a little while, which is good. We're going to have lots of good bacteria in there to start the process. And then some of these broke down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, let me show you guys. Okay, so this is getting fuller. But like, okay, this container here, you guys can see, it has been sitting longer. And it's very fuzzy. So I'm hoping, because I have all sorts of different levels of decomposition going on in here, that we will have lots of good bacteria to speed up the process. All right, and speed up as we go. And then our last container, this one, this one's the most recent, it has Cilantro, cauliflower, avocado bits, dog hair from brushing. So I figured why not. All right. So I technically can still add to this a little bit. I'll show you guys how full it is. So we're below the airline that I was worried about. But I think it's okay at this point. There's plenty of room and it's gonna shrink down as it decomposes. So just for good measure, I'm gonna put, I like the worms. I know it's gonna decompose. I know it's gonna break down. I know it's gonna attract bugs. They're gonna do their best to try to get in. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of cover the top a little bit with some paper towels because obviously the paper towels will break down over time as well. And I can put them in with the worms and. Like my worm feedings, these are also the um, pre-used paper towels from my kitchen. So that's helpful, I get to recycle those. And then I'll put my pizza topper on top and just kind of, I'm just pushing down a little bit so you guys can see how much it's already compressed down. So none of the air vents have been blocked at all. 
and everything is still able to flow. So the next thing I want to do is cover it up and then I think the best spot I want to put or the spot I want to put this on first is my porch and patio which you guys see uh, on the garden tours that I upload where my orchids are. It's usually a mess because it's kind of like an in-progress zone but I'm going to cover this up really well because my thought is once I fill a bucket I don't want to really open it up again unless I'm either checking on it or harvesting it. Like I don't want I would rather save things in the these salad containers and then fill one bucket at a time because it's just painting it a little bit. All right, so bucket one is ready to go. I'm gonna put it on the porch so it's covered. It'll get indirect heat and a little bit of morning sun uh, or indirect sun, I suppose. It's gonna be direct heat and it is Florida. I mean, you guys helping me with my bucket checking? Moose is like, yeah, mom, always helping. TBD and Wally. It's a nice, cool day for Florida. The last few days, it's been in the low 80s. We've had these beautiful breezes coming through. The roses are all doing great. Uh, and I'm really happy it's only in the 80s right now because next week we're all upper 90s. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily help my compost situation. Uh, so it's been two weeks since our compost experiment has been started. It's literally, the bucket's been sitting here uh, on the porch. I haven't moved it at all. Uh, I haven't even opened it. And I thought, you know, it's a nice day out. Ooh, look, you see there's a little caterpillar right there. That's a monarch caterpillar right there next to Wally's toes. Must be walking around. Hold on, we gotta go help him find some food. Wally doesn't even realize it's right next to him. Oh good, oh good. But the problem is, is our screen is a little loose right now, so I don't want this guy to think it's a good idea for him to stay there. Oh yeah, you're sick already? Even better. And he looks like he's gonna go molt soon. Let's go move him really quick. Over. Hmm, where should we move him? Actually. Yes, you do, Moose. He's ripping up the cardboard for me, so I'm not actually that mad. But we need to get this guy at home. Let's find him. Some milky. Oh, yes. Over here. We got milkweed up here. He can grow up. Go. Cool climb up. I'm just gonna put him in here. Good luck, little guy. Meanwhile, Moose the Destroyer. Carry on, Moose. <laughs> I used to have cardboard down, if you guys remember, from when my little kiddie pool was back here, and I'm pulling it up slowly, but Moose has been helping, so I just kind of let him go for it. So, we were back to this here. Now, I'm going to be opening it up for the first time, so I have the camera set up. I don't see anything, uh, like all of my little uh, inside, what is that, bug prevention screen, like the little tape, seems to be in place. So, curious to see what we get in here and find. Okay, definitely moisture, which is fine. Um, as long as it's not in mass. So I'm gonna move you guys a little bit closer. It's about as close as I can get you right now. Alright. Mmm. That doesn't look good. Some sort of maggots or something, I'm thinking. Hmm. Probably maggots if I had to guess. Let me bring you guys in. I think by anybody's standards, that is too wet. So that was on me. And I'm assuming there's eggs in here of things that um, were on the plants and whatnot. And I definitely did not put enough uh, paper materials or whatnot in here. So it doesn't really smell, which is good, but uh, 
I got the, it does smell a little bit. I take that. It smells a little bit. Nothing terrible. So to help rectify my learning curve, I have my shredded cardboard and I kind of need like these. You can see the bottom of the bucket down there. There's some staining juices. So we're just going to go ahead and put some paper kind of like on um, that half of it. So it's like a little bit of a half and half, so half paper, half uh, food. So that's interesting. I'm definitely gonna ask the Reddit what kind of bugs those are, what they think it is. So we're just gonna push that back down uh, from just a general interest point of view. I want to I want to note that if you guys remember when we uh what was that two so two weeks ago actually while we're talking I'm gonna put a little bit more paper in just to see if it helps um, absorb anything extra. So two weeks ago when we put this in the food was almost at these holes. It was you know so it's compressed down a lot. It's also Compress them so this much. Plus, if you gotta remember, like I put all of that uh, shredded cardboard and paper and whatnot in, so it's actually even lower than this. So, quite a bit of progress, but obviously the food is still very much recognizable. So, nowhere near where we want it to be. Um, but I'm definitely gonna be posting on Reddit, trying to get some answers, and then when we do the next check-in, you'll hear. Uh, what I found or what our plans are to deal with that because obviously we don't want to stick uh, worms of any kind in our uh, indoor worm bin. So that's our two-week check-in for now. This is an ongoing thing. All right, so it's actually been a few days since I recorded us checking in in our nuggets that you saw probably moments ago. And ultimately I decided uh, I had even put <laughs> this little uh, thing on here. Do not open on porch because I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of flies in here. So I'm gonna take this outside and I'll probably open it. I don't know, not near the door at this time. But ultimately, I decided this. I don't mind that there's flies and stuff in there because I understand that that's part of the natural process. I it's on me because I forgot to freeze the food before putting it in, or I just didn't think of it because it's an experiment. So there's no scenario where this is gonna go inside at this point with the amount of um, flies, maggots, larvae, whatever, that are in here. So I could let it keep going um, and let the flies just reproduce, die in there and just go through this cycle on and on and on. Um, or I was thinking I'll just dump this um, larva and all into my tumbler, my compost tumbler on the side of the house, which I haven't really been adding a lot to lately on the food side. Um, although I probably um, have, like I have been, t you know, tumbling it. Uh, so I figured, well, I'll add the larva in there and then they can break some of that down because that's compost that um, is also kind of a longer experiment, but uh, we're gonna be hitting um, pretty close to triple digits this week here in Florida. Uh, when I'm recording this, we're looking at 96s, 97s before heat indexes even kick in. So this stuff can definitely break down out in that tumbler really well. Then I can rinse this container out, fill it up with food, and then freeze it either with the food in it or freeze the food and then put it in. I'm still trying to figure out which one I want to do. Um, and then we can just kind of go from there and let that break down knowing that it's a kind of a sterile container, if that makes sense. So one thing at a time, which means the first thing we're gonna do is try and empty this out, see what's in here. Um, Cause it's only been a few days since I checked in with you guys. Um, so we'll see how many flies are in there, how the, I guess the maggots and larvae are doing and then dump them into our tumbler. All right, so we're kind of in between. We're near the hose area, tumblers over there. And then we got the screen porch over here. So we got plenty of space, but I'm just, I wanna open this up and uh, see if we have flies in here, what we, what we have in here. So let's, let's see what we got. 
okay. Like a fly flew out. <laughs> hmm. Thought there was I thought it was gonna be more dramatic. Maybe my paper method helped a lot. <laughs> I'm putting it on that paper. Let's see what we got in here. I would imagine like those nuggets. Oh yeah, okay. There's a few. There's a few flies. There they are. Okay, so there's definitely still water in here. Like I said, it's only been a few days. So yeah, there's still, I don't know if you guys can see, there's still creatures, larva, various types in there. Um, obviously the moisture hasn't wicked up yet. Um, actually, here, let's see. Yeah, this stuff is damp, but it's not really bad. Okay, so we're gonna go dump it into the tumbler. But before we do, let's get our tumbler ready to go and see what it looks like on the half that gets food. Okay. It's definitely been breaking down because I haven't been adding to it. I don't know if you guys can see. It's somewhat full. I'm not going to record while I'm trying to dump this in there because it's going to go everywhere. And I want this to be somewhat clean. So I'll be right back and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Yep. I'm sure we're all surprised. This smells terrible. And uh, not so surprisingly, the tumbler now smells even more. But that's part of the decomposition process, I guess. So I try to get as much in. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see there. It's so bright out right now. The camera's having a hard time, but we added a lot in. I'm not gonna um, tumble too right now. I'm just gonna let it kind of drip down because there's a lot of juices. So I'm gonna rinse this container out and then we're gonna start thinking about plans for how to redo this. So we're gonna let that, now that it's been rinsed out, we're gonna let it just sit in the sun. There's definitely some kind of like mold and growth and stuff that were on the sides that didn't come out with a quick rinse. So we're letting them sit in the sun while I try and figure out if I can, for, if it's easier to freeze the food scraps in the salad containers that I normally store the scraps in, or is it better to try to see if I can make room in my chest freezer fill this up and then try and take it out. I'm a little worried about this because one, I don't think if I put this whole thing in the chest freezer, um, it'll be easy to lift in and out. I think it'll be heavy. And two, uh, it's not accessible, right? Like not everybody has room for that, but everybody can probably figure out how to fit a solid container in their freezer. And so if we have to do it incrementally, I'd rather do that. So I think that's what we're gonna do.